Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna review the LibTech MC Snake Kink. This board is only available in 159. This board features Mervin's C3 camber profile, which is camber 2.0. They try to claim that there's a little bit of reverse between the feet and camber underfoot, but if you look at it, it's almost flat. It's camber 2.0, which means it's gonna ride like traditional camber and give you snap and pop. I rode this board at Arapaho Basin on a day that was like heavy wet snow, chunder pow, frozen crust underneath and everything in between. There was like some moderate wind, you know, it was a little bit warmer temperatures, and I rode it with my K2 Thraxxus boots and my K2 Indy bindings. Look at it, clearly, obviously, directional. What you get is slightly softer nose, stiffer midsection, then the tail is a little stiffer, but not much more than the nose, and there's a moderate amount of torsional flex. You know, overall, it's one of those boards that kind of borders on a free ride flex, now the unique thing with this board is the stability in it. Micro vibrations are just gone, just completely dampened. You feel absolutely nothing. It's only when you slam into really rutted out terrain that you feel anything with this board. It was like a combination of being damp and lively because this board just wasn't dead, but it did a great job of dampening just vibrations but you could still feel the bigger contours underfoot, which gave it its liveliness. It was a really weird thing to ride, and it took me just the whole time I was riding it to try to figure it out. There isn't a lot of snap in this board. Sure, it has C3, so you do have to load it up, and it will pop, and there will be rebound, but it's not one of those boards that's like really aggressive when you load it up and you feel that rebound right away just snapping back to its original form and putting you in the air. It's one of those boards that you load it up, you pop, it gets the job done. The faster you go, the higher you get, depending on what you're popping off of. It's it's just a very unique ride. I tried to butter it, I failed. I tried again, I failed. I tried yet again, and I failed. That was just a little too stiff and a little too big for me to just make it into a butter stick. I think if someone weighed more than me, they could probably manhandle it. But for me, it just didn't happen. The side cut held well on ice, and a lot of that due in part is to the magnet traction. Did it turn ice into powder? No, that's just marketing bullshit. But it did grip well, and that's what really mattered when I was riding it this day. Now, with that said, this is one of those boards that you gotta throw all your weight into the center of it to drive it, and even then, you're not gonna get deep and low and drag your body across the ground and slingshot out. This is really one of those boards that it's better for those big swoopy long turns or you load the tail up and you just do a tight quick turn right off the tail. It's actually better for doing those tight quick turns right off the tail where you're just sort of slingshotting in and out almost like a bank slalom where you're just like boom, 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 just getting in and out, going around, doing all that. That's where I think this thing actually excelled at turning. So who's this board for? Someone that wants a stiffer, more aggressive bank slalom style of snowboard. I didn't like this board, it just seemed a little too stiff and aggressive for what I was riding. I really had to push it harder than I thought to drive it through the fresh snow and the chunder snow and the crap snow and everything in between. And as I said, there's a lot of power behind it. The other weird thing is that kink in the nose, like it's supposed to be like a speedboat to funnel powder out and give you better float. What I discovered was with heavier snow, it sort of just impacted it and it seemed to slow the board down. Like you could feel it hit and it would, just slow you down and you're like what the fuck is going on with this thing and it was it was unique I mean I get it they're trying something new with the way that shape of that nose is but still it's it's not quite dialed where I think it needs to be and when you did hit it you'd feel shockwaves just resonate through the board it was like the one time I felt any chatter in this board was just hitting that in there otherwise this board was super damn super stable Comparable boards, the Jones Ultra Mind Expander, the Nidecker Smoke, the Capita Kazu. This has been my review of the LibTech MC Snake Kink. Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the content we've got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you'd really like to support us, and you want to see us grow out our snowboarding network, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. 
I can tell you more here, but I've got a video over there. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.